week in the Little Church Lab. We sure have had a great time conducting experiments, haven't we? We've thought about happiness, work, time, injustice, money, and even wisdom. This is our last week in the lab. And this week, we're going to think about youth. Now, not youth as in those that are older than you, those bigger kids who get donuts every Sunday morning, but youth as the opposite of old age. When we think about getting older, what kinds of things happen to us? Sometimes people slow down. They might find it harder to be mobile, have less energy, start getting wrinkles on their face. Whereas when people are young, they're more likely to have lots of energy. If we say that someone is youthful, then we're saying they have the characteristics of being young, fresh, active and energetic. So today we're going to do some experiments thinking about youth. But before we get into that, let's start off with a song. If you stub your toe when you get out of bed And you slip in the shower and you knock your head If you miss your brekkie and your bike tires flat If the dog eats your lunch and you step on the cat Remember the Lord, oh Remember that He is in control Remember the Lord, oh He's watching His children He cares, oh Remember the Lord, oh, oh. If you get to school about a half hour late and the principal meets you at the gate, if you can't remember one plus two and you're busted for something that you didn't do, remember the Lord, oh. Remember that He is in control. Remember the Lord, Oh, he's watching his children, he cares, oh, remember the Lord, oh, oh. If your dad is crusty and your mum's in a flap, and you spill the custard in your sister's lap, if you're sent to bed and you don't know why, and you can't get to sleep, and you just want to cry, <laughs> Remember the Lord, oh, remember that He is in control. Remember the Lord, oh, He's watching His children, He cares, oh, remember the Lord, oh, oh. <laughs> You're hitting the skids and you're up the creek If you're down and out and things look bleak If you're in the pits and you're out for a duck If you're long in the tooth and short of a buck Remember the Lord, oh Remember that He is in control Remember the Lord, oh He's watching His children He cares, oh Remember the Lord, oh, oh. Hey, you're still with us, great. In just a little while, we're gonna have some more scientists come and help us think about youth. But before that, I thought we could play a quick game of guess who? I have some photos of some friends of mine, some young friends of mine, but in the photos, they've been made to look very wrinkly and old. I wonder if you can guess who it is in the picture and how old they really are. Here's the first one. Can you guess? Ah, 
that's right, it's Julie. She's eight, though she looks much older in the picture, doesn't she? What about this one? That's Jude. He's 10, going on 100, it seems. All right. That's Cal. Cal's nine. But I wonder if that's what he will look like when he's 90. What about this one? It's Elias. He's 11. And this one? It's Audrey. She's only eight, but she certainly doesn't look it in the photo, does she? I've got one more for you. Wow, that's Louis. He's only seven, but he looks so much older than that, doesn't he? I wonder if that's a little what Lewis's grandfather might look like. Well, we look different as we get older, don't we? But there are other things that change too. And that's what we're now going to look at with scientist Megan and some of her friends. So sit down and settle in as we contemplate and conduct some experiments about youth. Hello, scientists. Today, our ancient scientist takes on a topic that none of you fresh-faced scientists have actually experienced much of yet, but that myself and our ancient scientists can actually talk a lot about, and that is getting old. I remember when I changed sides from young to old, there was no going back. I felt it most one day when I was getting on the bus and a school kid yelled to his friend, hey, let the old lady go first. Well, I looked around and I couldn't see an old lady. And then I realized he was talking about me. Our world says a lot about getting old and it's not necessarily good things either. There are creams that you can use to make yourself look a little younger and apparently slow down the aging process. And some people pay a lot of money to get rid of wrinkles and saggy skin. But no matter how many creams or surgeries we have, there is one thing that is inevitable. And Ecclesiastes says that time after time after time, and that is that getting old and dying will come to us all. So what does the scientist find when he examines life under the sun and getting old? Well, firstly, he gives a description of growing old. Wait for it, guys. Welcome to your future. With the onset of old age, the sun and the moon and the stars begin to look dimmer. And then you realise it's time to go to Specsavers. With age, the grinders cease because they are few. This picture here is talking about teeth that have been ground down to nothing or have fallen out, meaning that you need to get some dentures. With age, the strong man stoops. With age, that muscular body is reduced to curvature of the spine and six packs become extra six inches on the waistline. With age, the song of birds grow faint. Hearing loss makes it impossible for me to enjoy the cockatoos or the kookaburras. With age, you spend your time saying, what was that, love? Speak a little louder, honey. With your age, your hair changes to the colour of white almond blossom. 
This is all ahead of you. With age, we become afraid of heights and dangers in the street. Fear sets in and our bodies grow frail and you take less risks. And going outside at night, well, doesn't really sound much fun anymore. Our scientist then gives those who are young, that's you guys, a warning. He says, when you are young, remember your creator before this breakdown happens. There is a call to be happy, to take advantage of your youth. Youth is a time to enjoy. Why? Because the body hasn't begun to break down. You can eat what you like, you can get away with it. Friends are plenty and there's always a party to go to. But with this comes a strong warning from our scientist. Remember God before you die. When the dust returns to the ground from which it came, the spirit returns to the God who gave it. Death comes to all. We all are to remember our creator before we die, before it's too late. Well, in contrast, our world says we must remember to do our bucket list before we die. Travel to that place, taste that food, jump from a plane. But be assured, when God sifts through your life, he won't be concerned about how much of your bucket list you did. Young scientists, take note from our ancient scientists and his experiments. While you are young, remember God. Hi everyone, my name is Kelly and I'm here with Jill. And Jill has some grandkids who go to Lil Church. Um, Jill, who are your grandkids? My grandkids are Lockie and Emily, and I hope they've been good today. I'm sure they are. Hi, Lockie and Emily, um, and Hi. hello to everyone else. Uh, I'm with Jill today, and we're going to get some wisdom um, from someone who is a little bit older than um, all of you. Um, Jill, what's the best thing that you remember about your youth? Okay, so when I was young, we had no TV or any electronic things at all. So no phones, no computers. Oh yeah, we did have a landline phone. <laughs> oh, I don't think they that would know that it's, it's, it's attached to the wall. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. So no, no technology. No, no wow. nothing like that. So what would you do? So, um, my sister and I and lots of kids in the street, we used to play lots of running around games and hiding and... Um, one of the good things my sister and I liked to do was to throw a tennis ball over the house. She would be in the back and I'd be at the front or the other way around and we'd see if we could get it over and catch it. It was great. That's brilliant. I recommend you all having a go at home. <laughs> Find a tennis ball. Don't stand in the street though. No, that's true. Maybe ask your mum and dad beforehand. Yeah. Just give it a go. Yeah. Uh, Jill, what uh, are some things that you've noticed about yourself as you've gotten older? Okay, so as you can see, my hair is getting a bit grey. Um, I'm having to wear glasses. I wear hearing aids. And I'm slower. So when my grandkids are with me, they have to slow down. They go there and back and there and back while we're getting to the park. <laughs> but you still have lots of fun, right? I have great fun. That's good. All right, so Jill, uh, what is the best thing about getting older? Well, having grandchildren is a really great thing. It's fun and I love it. And um, I've got a lot more time. Mm -hmm. So you don't go to school anymore? No more school. No, no more school. <laughs> but that means I don't have school holidays. Oh, that's a bit sad. <laughs> You're always on holidays. <laughs> Holiday every day. Um, so I have time to spend with friends and um, having coffee with people, which is really nice. But I think the best thing of all is that I've got more time to spend with 
God, reading his word and reminding myself and teaching myself the way he wants me to live and with his help trying to do so. Hmm. Okay. So in Ecclesiastes, the writer says, remember your creator while you are youth. What do you think he means by that? I think he means that when you're young, you've got lots of strength and energy to um, serve God, however he shows you that he wants you to. Um, you've got your whole life ahead to think about um, how he wants you to live and maybe how he wants you to um, like work or serve him yeah yeah work or serve him in the future maybe um, um, you might want to be a missionary or God might lead you into being a missionary God might lead you into doing what Kez is doing or what Matt is doing mm. um, or what Mike is doing. Yeah, or Megan or, or Megan. everyone who serves uh, in our church. Yeah, yes. that's right. Um, Jill, why do you think it's important to remember your creator? It's important because if you remember, that means that you remember that he's always with you. Um, that you've always got forgiveness there. You can say sorry to God anytime you know that you've done something bad and you know that he's, he'll forgive mm. you. And the best thing of all is that when you do die, you go to heaven. Yeah. Yep. So I'm closer to heaven than most of you. <laughs> so if it was a race, <laughs> you'd be winning. <laughs> and just to remember that God, that Jesus gave, God gave Jesus to you as a gift and all you have to do is accept him and say, thanks God, I want to grow and be like Jesus and love him more every day and do what he wants you to do. This brings us to the end of our interview, but before we go, uh, I'm just going to pray for Jill and I'm going to pray for everyone at Little Church as well. So please join with me um, and everyone at home uh, while we pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I praise you uh, that Jill knows you and that Jill has uh, had the opportunity to live um, a lot of her life with you. And we thank you for the person that you've created her to be. Lord, please be in all of our lives. Uh, everyone at Little Church, please be working in their lives, Lord, to draw them closer to you and help them to live lives that bring glory to your name every day. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone, uh, enjoy the rest of Little Church. And if you see Jill around, please say hi, especially Emily and Lockie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see ya. Bye. Well, what interesting observations and hypothesis we've heard today. And throughout our entire time in the little church lab. Every single week we've heard about the difference that Jesus makes in our lives, in all aspects of our lives. It's given us a lot to think about, hasn't it? I hope you keep thinking and talking about it, observing the world around you, thinking about what you see and asking what difference does knowing Jesus make to all these things? Because as we've heard, he really does make a difference. Jesus loves us and he enables our lives to have meaning and purpose here and now, while also helping us to be confident that even if our lives aren't perfect, he promises us perfect eternal life with him. All we have to do is trust him with our lives. We just need to have faith in him. That's pretty great news, isn't it? Well, scientists, that is it for our time in the little church lab. But it has been so great to have you with us. Thanks for helping us out each week. And we'll see you again soon back in regular little church. See you later. Bye.